Remember when my alocasias were breaking my heart? Alocasias will break your heart. Not if, not maybe, they will break your heart. And I know this because they've broken mine into a million pieces. Well, look at them now. These beauties have transformed into a thriving collection and today I'm sharing exactly how I turned things around. If you've ever struggled with your plants, you're going to want to stick around for this. Here's a quick reminder of where I started. You might remember how my alocasias were barely hanging on. I had issues with root rot and unhealthy leaves, which was heartbreaking. They were yellowing, droopy, and it felt like no matter what I did, they were on the verge of dying. I've made some significant changes in their care that I can't wait to share with you. Look at these gorgeous leaves. Each plant is healthier than ever and I want to show you how I've achieved this. I'm focusing on my growing setup and environment to keep them thriving. Before I go into the changes that I made to help my alocasias thrive, I'm going to show you the plants that I have at the moment that I am loving. Plants that have survived through autumn and winter. We're now in spring. Plants that are doing so well. I think my methods are working. I'll show you how they are at the moment and then we'll get into exactly what I did. This is one of my perfect alocasias at the moment. This is my alocasia dragon scale. Look at how beautiful that plant is. Those leaves are so beautiful. It is actually multi-planted. You can see that there's actually lots of plants in this pot and it's living in lecker clevels, like I said, and now I'm gonna show you the inside of this pot. That is the root system of my plant. That's the wick that's going into the reservoir and pulling up the nutrient solution. That there is my reservoir, and you can see that nutrient solution in there. What is beautiful about this plant is take a look at those roots over there. Those roots are loving it in there. Look at them, they're gorgeous and white and firm, but also take a look at that. Take a look at that, look at that. That is just absolutely beautiful. This plant is thriving and really, really loving it. And I think all it needs is a little bit more time. This time next year, I'll be showing you a much bigger plant. This one over here is one of my star performers. This is my alocasia black velvet. Oh my goodness, look at that. This plant is absolutely thriving. This is one of the plants that's actually been flowering. You can see that inflorescence over there. I think there was another, there was another one back here. This one over, oh, hang on. I can't really see it properly because of all the leaves. This one over here was another flower and it's now giving me a new leaf. This plant is just thriving. There's three of them in there. It's living in an 18 centimeter pot and this is a self-watering pot with the water level indicator, which is great. There's the little water level indicator, which makes it really easy for me to manage this reservoir because I can see what's going on. I'll pull it out and show you what the roots are doing. That is the plant there. And you can see, oh, hang on, it's a bit heavy. That is a little root that's dangling there. That's doing really, really well. I put little ventilation holes in there and I think that plant is really loving it. Those are the little wicks dangling there, dripping um, nutrient solution. So yeah, alocasia black velvet. This little mama here is my alocasia scalprum. Look at how beautiful that leaf is and that one over there. So of course I should mention that we are now in spring in Australia. So we've just come from winter and these are alocasias that I'm showing you that have actually survived the winter season. And this is what they look like at the beginning of the growing season in spring. So I'm really happy with the progress of these plants and that's just, that one is just looking beautiful. Of course, this one is living in Lekka Clables in a wick setup. That is the little wick over there. That's the nutrient solution in there. And you can see, look at that gorgeous little root that's just coming through there. Those roots are really, really healthy. And you can see that because those roots are healthy, that plant is just looking delicious. This alocasia over here is my silver dragon this is my little silver dragon planter and i really love how that plant is coming up look at that leaf looking absolutely beautiful of course it is multi-planted and i think it's going to do really really well i'll show you what the roots look like 
of course living in a wick setup as well look at that how beautiful is that root system and then you've got this little one over here just peeking out one thing i don't like about these pots actually is that these net pots aren't transparent so we actually can't see the entirety of the root system which is quite a shame especially when the plant is doing really really well like this i would love to see what else is happening with the plant with the roots that actually have not come through there but you know i think because the plant is looking so good i can only assume that good things are happening next up is this gorgeous mama this is my alocasia mellow look at that doing so well the leaves are looking so beautiful as firm and lovely texture as cardboard and it just looks amazing this plant is happy really really happy look at that it's produced this flower over here this other one here that's just spent and yeah it's doing so so well also still living in Lekka clay balls and let me show you what the oh hang on a second i just saw something as i've been talking to you here I just saw, I don't know if you can see, oh, you might not be able to see it, but hang on. Somewhere right over here is a little plant that's emerging. That is just coming out. So there was a corm there that's germinating inside the lecker, and that plant is about to come up. Oh, exciting times. So again, this is another plant that's living in a wick setup over there. And you can see the lovely fuzzy roots that are coming through over there looking oh, so, so healthy. So healthy. I am loving the way this Alocasia Mellow is looking at the moment. Next up is my Alocasia Green Velvet. This is a plant that I thought was an absolute goner. It used to be really beautiful. It used to be magnificent. And then it just turns to mush. I had to give it some rehab, but I think we are getting there. I've got this new leaf over here. There's another one coming there. And you can see over here, I've got a new small plant that is emerging out of that lecker. So yes. I think my plant is going to return and is going to continue looking beautiful. Let's take a look at the roots. That is the wick system over there. Unfortunately for this one, there's actually no roots that have emerged from the net pot. So a little bit boring. And this is where, honestly, if this net pot had been transparent, that would have given us a bit of a better show. But you know what? I'm, I'm happy with just having that plant emerging there. Happy with that. I'll take that. This is actually my biggest alocasia. This is my alocasia ebony. And oh wow, this plant is doing so well. Actually, it's doing really, really well. This is the plant when I made that first video where I was talking about how alocasias are breaking my heart. It was, it, the plant was pretty much dead. This is my alocasia ebony. Alocasia ebony. It was a beautiful plant it was it had the most magnificent leaf it was awesome i think there's a new leaf coming there there was but it feels very crispy it was thriving before and now it's not it decided it didn't want to live here anymore and it's gone it might still be alive in there i don't know because as you know alocasias do tend to go dormant but there's really no reason for this plant to have gone dormant and i suspect what's under there is nothing but mush i'm just gonna leave it there and see what happens honestly it was dead you can see it over here it was just it was for the scrap heap i'm so glad i didn't throw it out and that's really a big lesson when you're growing alocasias you know it's not over until it's over the plant can always come back look at this gorgeous beauty this plant came back for me and is doing really well she's just settled in her pot she's living in a 14 centimeter pot in lecker clay balls and you will notice though that this is actually the only alocasia that i've still got living in a submerged setup so you can see that this pot sits inside the nutrient solution and is right next to those roots but that's what that plant looks like you know that's that's a root 
that's coming out of that pot over there there's another one over there they're lovely and firm they're not breaking off and it obviously doesn't have any root rot you can actually see over here over here this is actually a new leaf that's emerging over there gosh this plant is actually really really happy and I'm so glad that I've been able to grow an allocation like this. This is this plant is actually not living in the grow tent. This is one of my allocations that just lives outside because it's actually acclimated to my conditions. And yeah, it is a loving, loving life. So I'm really grateful for this one. It's redeeming me in my own eyes. This next one I'm going to show you is a mishmash pot. I like to call it a mish a mishmash pot because I threw a bunch of corms in this one pot. I didn't want to have too many alocasia pots, so I had a lot of corms left over and I just threw them in there and we have an interesting mix. You can see this is an alocasia mellow over there. There's another alocasia, I think I've got about two or three alocasia mellows here. And then I've got, hang on a sec, I think this is, this looks like a silver dragon to me over here. It looks like a silver dragon. So this looks like an Alocasia Mellow Silver Dragon pot. It's beautiful. I think I'm, I'm just going to leave them there and see what they do because I think it's A, it's great space saving, but I think it will make for a very interesting pot. And they are also living in a wick setup. That is what that looks like. Those are the two microfiber wicks and you can see there's a little root that's come through there that looks absolutely lovely and there's so much new growth in this pot it looks beautiful i'm just completely in awe completely in awe last but not least is this and i know some of you might be thinking well this is not looking too hot it doesn't look like you saved this one but just give me a sec give me a sec let me show you this is my alocasia freedic variegated right and look this is actually an efflorescence right it's flowering my plant is actually flowering and that's not a leaf this is what this plant looked like a week ago so these two leaves were fully alive they were in action but of course in true alocasia style it can't sustain too many things going on at the same time and this was a lighter leaf as you can see over there so it is packed up it is on it oh hang on there I've just pulled that off it's on its way out it's gone this one was also a very very highly variegated leaf so I'm not surprised that it is leaving so I'll just clean that up nicely but what I really love is look this is the second little plant that's in this pot look at how beautiful that looks and it's got a new leaf this little one over here look at that look at how amazing that leaf looks so this is why I say this plant is actually a success. I thought it was dead a few months ago, but you know, it was alive somehow and it has actually given me new leaves. Okay, let's take a look at the roots. So this is living in a 14 centimeter pot. It is also living in a wick setup and you can see the wicks over there and you can see the roots that are dangling off my pot over there the root system is looking very healthy even when i look at the roots that are inside the pot they look pretty healthy so i think this plant just really needs some time in order to just bring all of those leaves back and so it can just maintain the leaves and they can just be shining all the time and of course it is a variegated plant so things are a little bit trickier with variegated plants you know, the all white leaves, like the one I pulled off before, they just tend to go after a while. So, you know, the number of leaves that you can have are highly dependent on that. So what did I do differently this time? Well, I'm still using like a clay balls, but the setup has completely changed. Instead of keeping them submerged in water like before, I switched to a wick system for the majority of my allocations. This wick setup keeps the lecker environment much drier making it less likely for the roots to stay too wet and develop rot, which was a huge problem in the past. My allocation would be doing well and then all of a sudden the roots would rot and the plant would turn to actual mush. Like what the actual? This really frustrated me. 
I knew my allocations were getting too much moisture and switching to a wick setup fixed that once and for all. I also made another major change. Most of my smaller allocations now live in a grow tent. This lets me fully control the humidity, light and temperature, especially during the cooler autumn and winter months. These controlled conditions give my plants the ideal environment to not just survive, but thrive. Over the years, I've lived in a three different houses since I started collecting allocations. Each move brought new challenges in terms of the conditions I could provide for my plants. For instance, in my first house, I had amazing natural light but the temperature fluctuated too much. Then in my second home, I had a better temperature control but struggled with low humidity. In my current home, I found that using a grow tent for my smaller jewel allocations has been a game changer. It allows me to create a controlled environment where I can adjust the humidity, light and temperature to meet their needs. It's definitely not the only solution and I understand that a grow tent may not be practical or feasible for everyone, but it certainly works for me right now. The key takeaway here is that every plant owner's environment is unique. What works for me might not work for you and that's perfectly okay. It's all about understanding your specific conditions and making the necessary adjustments. Whether you have a sunny window, a basement, or a grow tent, there are ways to help your plants thrive. I check the humidity levels regularly, ensuring they stay between 60 to 80% humidity. As my allocations are living in a grow tent, this is easy to control. I don't even need to use a humidifier because there are a lot of plants in this enclosed space and they create an ideal humidity level. I also make sure that there's nutrient solution in the reservoir at all times, allowing the wick of the wicking system to provide just enough moisture without oversaturating the roots. Having my allocations live in this grow tent allows me to optimize lighting for my plants. I use a full spectrum LED grow lights which provide a perfect balance of blue and red wavelengths. This helps mimic natural sunlight, encouraging my allocations to grow lush and healthy. The right light is crucial for photosynthesis and having a consistent light source means my plants get the energy they need to thrive. I'm loving what my allocations are doing at the moment. I think, I think, touch wood, I think I've cracked what I need to do to care for my allocations in this current home. Watch my next video and see the pain that I have gone through in caring for my allocations. I'll see you there.